Hey guys, Frax1006, aka Wondermutt here again. And today I'm going to be showing you how to install and set up the FAH GPU Tracker V2. First thing you'll want to do is to download the uh, Tracker V2 client. And to do that, you would just go to fahtracker.com. On the first page here, it's got the download link, so go ahead and click download. And you're going to want to make sure you save this um, somewhere that you know where it's going to be on your system because uh, when we go to set it up, it will actually set up in the folder that it's saved in. So um, for me, I already set up a folder for it here. And I oh, just have to remember where I put that folder would be very helpful. Okay, here we go. And I made a folder, FAH Tracker V2. All right, and then we're going to go ahead and save the zipped file into that folder. You'll notice it downloads really quickly. You can go ahead and close your browser and navigate to the file that you just saved. Now, one thing I will say is if you are using a... Um, solid state drive and you house your uh, OS on the solid state drive and then you have another drive for your storage as I've got here. Um, you do want to make sure that you're installing the uh, GPU Tracker V2 on the OS drive. I have run into issues trying to install it on my secondary drive. It does not want to work. If you do that, I for some reason cannot get it to work at all saving it on my storage drive instead of my OS drive. So if you're using an SSD for your OS, make sure you do install Tracker on the OS drive. It's a really small file. It's not going to take up a lot of space, so you're not going to have to worry about running out of room on your SSD. All right, so then uh, what you'll see as I'm going, just running through here, go ahead and open up the compressed folder, and you'll see application here. This is going to be the install app. Go ahead and hit Extract All. And um, I'm going to go ahead and actually just put it in this folder here. OK, hit Extract. You'll see it pops up into that Tracker V2 folder. It's created a new folder here. And this is the actual client itself. So when you double click on it, I'm going to take off this Always Ask before opening this file. Um, this way it doesn't pop this box up every time you run the client. And the first thing it's going to ask you to do is if you want to download the FAH clients now, go ahead and click yes. And then you'll see it's going to start um, downloading the three different types of clients. And you'll also see in your folder here, it's created all the necessary folders uh, and files that it needs. So if you've got a pretty good download speed, this should only take a few seconds. And you'll see it goes ahead and pops up there. Now what I'm going to do while I've got this folder open is I am going to go ahead and create a shortcut. So you can just right click on it, go to send to desktop shortcut, and you'll see it puts my shortcut right there. That way I can go ahead and close out of these folders here. All right, and um, the next thing that we want to do is to go ahead and run through the actual setup. And the actual setup itself is, is really straightforward and easy. Um, what you want to do is go to Setup, Configure. Now, if you're doing uh, CPU folding, you can go ahead and highlight this. Make sure it's using all cores um, and um, the multi-core client, unless you're wanting to do just a single core client. Say you're running an old uh, Pentium 4 or something like that. Um, and actually, I've got this running on an old Pentium 4 system, and it's dual threaded, uh, one core but two threads, so I actually still use the multi-core there. So um, anyway, I recommend going ahead and adding the advanced methods. The big advanced isn't really going to do anything because you can't get big advanced work units in Windows. Um, they were actually programming ahead of themselves there. If you do want to limit it to um, a set number of cores to use, you can actually tell it here, I only want it to use three cores. Um, now because Tracker GPU, or the GPU Tracker client does not work with AMD GPUs as far as I know, or ATI GPUs as far as I know, um, 
you're really not going to have to worry about this. I know with ATI GPUs, you have to designate one um, core, or it helps if you designate a single core um, to just the GPU, but that's not necessary if you're um, running NVIDIA GPUs. Um, you can actually go ahead and set this to all cores, and it will not uh, have an effect on your, um, on your points per day. Uh, next thing we want to do if you're doing uh, GPU folding is to go ahead and hit enable GPU folding and there are a couple of ways you can set this up. Oh, actually it does look like they do have some ATI um, GPUs in here so I guess you can designate your cores there. But anyway, uh, what I always do is just hit auto detect GPUs. It's going to pick up what GPUs you have in the system. Here you see I've got a GTX 570 and a GTX 460 so I'm going to go ahead and say yes to those. Um, now, the adding the advanced method, you will pick up a little bit of um, PPD, a little bit higher PPD running the advanced methods when you can get the advanced, method wor advanced methods work units. Uh, they used to come pretty regularly, but now it seems like they're hit and miss lately. Um, however, I will forewarn you, running the advanced methods will cause your GPU to run about 10 degrees um, Celsius higher when you get those advanced methods works units. Uh, at least that's what I've seen um, out of mine. But anyway, we'll go ahead and set those up. Now if you do only want to set up one of them and uh, when you did your auto detect, tells you your GPU zero, you know, in my case is my 570, GPU one's my 460. If you want to use these settings, I'm going to go ahead and hit yes, but then I'm actually going to disable the 460 uh, just because that particular card is actually dying on me so I don't want to be folding on it right now so I'm just going to enable the uh, the 570 for now all right and then let's go ahead and click on tracker settings okay and the first thing we want to look at is this automatic updates I always leave it as do not check for automatic updates at startup um, the reason for this is they have actually already said they are not putting out any new updates for the tracker v2 they're actually working on the Tracker V3 client um, right now. Uh, haven't heard any word on when that'll be coming out, but uh, they're not updating the Tracker V2 any longer. Um, the Tracker V2 does work off of the uh, 6.34 client. Um, so the V3 is actually gonna be working off of uh, Stanford's V7 client, but um, I've actually found that there really isn't any points difference between the V7 and the V6.34, which is why I like to use the Tracker V2. This may, uh, actually I do know, if you're using ATI GPUs, I, I do not recommend using the V2 client because the 6.34 client that, it ba that it's based off of is not optimized for the ATI GPUs. You will want to use the V7 client. Um, anyway, moving on here. The next thing you see is your one unit mode. If you want to uh, set them up, that'll just process one work unit and then stop, you can do that. Um, since I am doing this just for demonstration purposes, I am going to go ahead and set the one units there. Um, that way it'll shut down after it finishes those work units. I'm just doing this as a demonstration, um, but I don't want to waste those work units for Stanford. So I'm gonna go ahead and one unit those there. And then um, the game pausing, uh, it does have a list of games built into the client that uh, when those games start up, it'll automatically pause your client, uh, which is really nice. That way you don't have to worry about actually pausing it or shutting it down or stopping it when you go to games. So you can set that up if you want. I'm not a gamer, so I've actually never used that. I uh, don't know how well it works. I do apologize. Uh, next thing though you do wanna look at is your client auto start. I always go ahead and set my auto starts. That way, as soon as the Tracker V2 client opens, it does auto start those clients, and you can set that up if you only want the GPU to start up or you only want the CPU to automatically start. You can just pick one of those. In my case, I'm gonna go ahead and pick both. And then if you want it to start minimized to your system tray, you can do this. That way, when it starts up, it's just gonna pop up in your system tray down here, and um, you won't see, you know, you won't actually see the client itself. Now, the next thing I want to touch on is the client configuration. Uh, client configuration, this is just like when you're setting up the standard um, 6.34 client. You're just going to enter your name. So mine is Wondermutt. 
Uh, team number, of course, I fold foreverclock.net, so that's going to be 37726. Or you can always do the quick team select from the drop down, so there's overclock.net. And then the pass key, I'm actually going to copy and paste my pass key here just because I hate trying to type the uh, pass keys in. And um, now it does have an automatic um, web setting where if you've set this up, say you're setting this V2 client up on multiple systems, you can actually save a uh, web setting. If you have a website out there uh, or if you're using Dropbox, you can save a web setting out there and just enable it to automatically load that. Just tell it where it's at here and it'll automatically load that for you. Um, then your EOC, your Extreme Overclock ID, just uh, click on that. It's going to search for your name and it'll pull your Extreme Overclock ID automatically for you. Um, and then the GUI options, I'll be honest with you, I never touch any of these, but your save window location is just going to save wherever this client happens to be at on your desktop. When you close it, the next time you open it, it'll pop up to that same spot. Alternate your stop start behavior is going to alternate how these buttons down here work. Uh, balloon notifications is just going to be the annoying balloon notifications that pop up from your uh, system tray. And um, auto load client stats. Um, I always leave my client stats on. I don't know if that's going to have any effect on it. I haven't seen any negative effects from it. So I always just leave that set. All right. And then um, heat control. This function actually does not work. Once again, the guys who are programming the Tracker V2 got a little bit ahead of themselves. Uh, we're hoping to be able to set this up so that you could set a uh, temperature setting in here and um, or your work unit settings. So that if you get a particular work unit, you only wanted to use 90% of your GPU. You could add that rule in here. Um, but like I said, it does not work, so you do not need to bother with messing with it. Uh, last thing is the web settings, the XML status. Um, this is if you want to export your, um, if you want to export status updates to um, an FTP site, you can do that. You can set it up to automatically upload your the status. Um, does this every three minutes it's, and uh, it'll show the last 10 log entries every time it uploads. Um, I don't bother messing with that either. That's just me. If you have an FTP site, you can certainly go ahead and do that. Um, now, the last thing I'm going to touch on, I'm going to go back to the client settings here. And here you see you've got your ad verbosity. Um, that's just going to add a more detailed folding log. If you want that, you can go ahead and do that. You can also set it to save your completed work units. Um, I always do that as well, just so I can, it'll keep track of how many work units I've completed. Um, and then the, the disable hiding clients, I'll be honest with you, I've never touched it, have no idea what it does. So anyway, let's go ahead and hit apply. When you hit apply, you see over here on the client, it's going to show your name your team and your total points per day is what you're processing total here. So then once I've applied those, I can go ahead and hit close. Now, once we have that, you have two different ways of controlling your clients. Okay. You can either control them with the start all clients button. That's going to do exactly what it says and start all of the clients that you have set up, or you can click on this multi GPU. And that's going to give you access to all of the GPU clients that you have set up. Um, or you can start, let's say I want to just start my CPU. I can click on that, just start the CPU. Um, you can see here it's downloading a, uh, a new project. And then I'll go ahead and click start my uh, GPU. And it's going to do the same thing. Takes it just a couple of moments there. And it's going to show this unknown for just a few moments while it's downloading a, uh, the new work unit. Um, now, while it's doing this, one thing I do like to do is go here and update the FAH. Um, oh, and actually, you'll see I'm getting a firewall block there. So let's see here. Okay. And... Yeah, I do want uh, the FAH core to be able to communicate through my firewall, so I'm going to go ahead and allow access for everything. You'll see while that was going on, I have downloaded my work units, and it's beginning there. This is going to show me the uh, points that I'm getting. 
And then once it's processed, I believe it's 3% for each one. It'll show you your points per day. It may even show up after one. I'll be honest with you, I don't remember. Um, but what I was going to say is um, let's go up here to setup and click on the download projects list. You'll see it pops up in your work window here that it's downloading the project list. That way it has the most current project list from Stanford. Um, and then I'll just touch on a couple of quick uh, nice features with the uh, Tracker V2 client here. Uh, the first is going to be your stats. Um, here you can actually view your uh, client stats. It'll pop up and ask you which client you want. So if I want my SMP client um, or your GPU zero client. And here, once you've completed work units, it's going to show you how many work units you've done, how many were completed, how many failed. And then, you know, it'll show for each of these projects um, what percentage of your projects was this project number. So, um, if at any point in time you do want to um, reset those stats, you do have your reset and you can reset all of them or you can reset them individually. Um, I find that easy if I'm testing, um, you know, trying to see what works best. I'll reset my clients, um, you know, if I'm trying to do a new overclock or something like that to see how it affects my, my uh, points per day and my TPF. Um, I'll reset my stats and that way I can go back and do a view, a clean view on what uh, I've done just on that overclock. Um, your user stats and you can look at, um, oh, and you'll see, yeah, it's not going to show me any user stats because this is a new setup, but normally that'll show your user stats, what you've done all together. That's with all of your clients together. And then if you click on the, um, the EOC stats, that's going to take you to your extreme overclocking website to view your stats there. All right, and then the other thing I want to touch on real quick is the under the client menu. You'll see here you've got a few things. You can go here to start and stop your client, um, which I find completely unnecessary. The buttons down here work just fine. Um, the view files, this will actually take you to the folder for that particular client. So if you want to, um, you know, view your FAH log, you can double click and it popped it up on a different window for me here. But and you can see, you know, it gives you your log there. Um, let's close out of those. And the last thing I'll touch on here is the delete work unit. Um, now, honestly, I don't recommend deleting work units. I don't like deleting work units, but uh, if you get the wild hair to, uh, you know, if you're going to be deleting Tracker V2 off your system and you don't want that work unit hanging around or anything like that, you can delete the work unit. Um, yeah, not really going to cover that a whole lot because I don't recommend it. Um, the last thing, uh, last actually last couple of things. First off, you can go to File, Main Folder. That's going to take you to the main folder where your FAH GPU Tracker V2 is saved. So if you forgot to create the desktop link, you can click on that and it'll take you back there. And then under the links, this has all the nice um, links directly to Stanford um, to their FAH homepage, the project list, the server status. If you're having trouble uploading, you want to check and see if the server you're connecting to is down or something like that, you can pull up the server status page there. All right, and then the last thing that I'm going to show you is just how to set uh, Tracker V2 to automatically start with your Windows startup. And uh, to do that's actually really easy. Once you've created your desktop shortcut, just right click on that click on copy, go down to start, all programs, scroll down to startup, click on explore, and then right click and hit paste. And that's it. It's now in your startup folder. So when Windows starts up, uh, Tracker V2 will start up with it. Um, Hope the video was helpful to you guys. If you have any questions, feel free to post in the comments down below, or you can um, look me up on overclock.net. Just do a search for Wondermutt. I'll be the first and only user to pop up there. You can feel free to send me a message. And as always, um, like, subscribe, comment, yak, 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 yada, yada, yada. Thanks for watching, guys, and I uh, hope that helped.